Hello, my name is Eusog, and today I am going to be... The history of FL Studio starts in ImageLine, a software company from Belgium. The founders of ImageLine started to get bored of making standard software and wanted to have more fun. So they got into the world of video games, which led them to be in a contest, where they met Didier Dembrenne, who later was asked to war with ImageLine. Gold produced some video games such as It This, But he also was the mind behind the idea of merging Hammerhead and Revert into a step sequencer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how Fruity Loops was created. Fruity Loops eventually started growing over the years, and the hard work behind it made it a very professional digital audio workstation. A few weeks ago, YouTube recommended me a video where it's talked how FL Studio is not the best doll for music producers, especially for beginners. That inspired me to make this video, because I've seen this too many times. In all areas, there are always two names that stand out from the rest. McDonald's and Burger King, Pizza Hut and Domino's, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, Android and iOS, in music production, it seems to be Ableton Live and FL Studio. Jokes aside, there is always this toxic fanatic part of every community, which is always arguing and sharing toxic comments about other dolls and explaining how their favorite doll is the best one. In this case, it looked like the toxic fandom of Ableton wanted everything to be just like Ableton. They usually said FL Studio was just a padded on professional music sequencer made for kids, and that using Ableton will get you a good and professional sound. But I found out that not only this toxic fandom were the only ones saying things like that, there were some academies and companies that said FL Studio was not a real DAW because of the name, the interface, or because they don't give you a certificate, and a lot of absurd arguments, but they never gave it a chance. At the beginning, I was starting to wonder if I was using the right DAW, but I was discovering cool features as I was using the software. Also finding out the brilliant work from producers like Savant, Bertha Robinson, Avishi, Imanu, Old Prophet, Who Came After, Spack Heavy, and more. In music production, start using a new software has always been a challenge, especially for those who already use any other software, because they are used to the controls of their main DAW. Being new to music production will make it much easier for you to learn any software. So don't waste your time complicating everything because the new DAW doesn't work the same as the other DAW you are used to. I had that stupid mindset when I was trying to use Ableton Live and Renoise after a couple years using FL Studio. Anyway, when you're new to a DAW, it is okay to mess around and try to figure out how it works. What you should do is read the reference manual, because that's where they introduce the software to you. In FL Studio, you can get access to the reference manual clicking here. There, they explain the basic controls, the interface, they even have videos teaching you how to make some music genres. And if you give it a quick look, you will learn how to copy and paste correctly and that you can copy anything, whatever you want, just by clicking. Okay, it's not to hate on the producer that made the FL Studio video. I truly respect his opinion, but making a video talking about something you don't actually know is just a way to misinform. And well, this video is not to say FL Studio is the best software. Just like any other music software, it has pros and cons, and ImageLine's team is always working on it. But I can name powerful giants like Harmor, Citrus, GMS, Flex, Patcher, Pocodex, Rosebeat and cool features like the Smart Disable, which reduces CPU load by turning off idle plugins. Also the amazing piano roll, the forums, and a cool community. And I'm not going to include the free lifetime updates. 
But all of that makes it so special. And FL Studio 21 is around the corner and it looks amazing so far. FL Studio is actually very easy for beginners. It is intuitive and the interface is friendly. Remember, learning a new software is a long process. No matter how many experience you have in the topic, it's not an overnight thing. But you can make hits and build an entire music career from your bedroom nowadays. You can even learn a lot from YouTube. We are living in the future and we, so be patient and practice every day. In conclusion, do I recommend a full studio? Well, no, I don't recommend any digital audio workstation. Most of them have their trial version free, so you can try them and use the one you like the most. What I do recommend is not using any software because your favorite artist uses or recommends it. Let's be real, when we are beginners we want to sound like our favorite musician, but you have to develop your own sound and using the software they use will not make you sound like them. Also, I recommend learning more than one software, because that would make you a very flexible artist. If you are starting with this music thing, I can't wait to listen to your music, because that's what matters, not where you make it. Goodbye.